Dribbling is not only one of the most fun skills in football, but one of the most crucial to master because not only will it help you get out of trouble and just in general be a better player, but especially from an attacking perspective, it can help you in so many ways to set up chances, to create openings, and so much more. And so in this video, I want to highlight some of the common mistakes that players make that are helping them to not really take advantage of their ability when it comes to dribbling. And if you look at all these mistakes and adjust your game to make sure you're not making them, you're going to be a much more effective dribbler that's just much more dangerous in matches. Now, before we jump into it, my name is Dave and this is Simply Soccer. If you're new to the channel where I am creating videos every single week to help you improve your game and stand out on the pitch. And if you haven't already, get my free ebook, Game Changer, which is linked down below. It is a 50 plus page ebook for free that's gonna help you take your game to the next level. Now, let's jump into the first thing here, the first mistake, and we're going in reverse order with number five, and it's over or under dribbling. Now, over dribbling is what you hear about most of the time, and I'm not gonna to spend too much time on that because you know what that is. But under dribbling is something that's not talked about as much because dribbling into space or dribbling against someone like one-on-one -on -one is usually seen as more as a, uh, more of a risk. But I think in certain situations, if you don't take the man one-on-one -on -one or exploit the space that puts your team in a better position or gives you more chance to score or set up a chance, I think that's also a mistake. Where you see like a lot of players that get the ball immediately turn around every single time and pass it back. Now, in most situations, that will be the great thing and right thing to do. But in other situations, the risk is worth the reward, or there's actually very little risk even if you did lose the ball, but the reward would be great if you didn't and actually beat your man or dribbled into that space. So learning to not under dribble as well, learning to kind of know when to exploit space, to take the man one-on-one, -on -one, et cetera, et cetera, is also a huge thing to work on. So it's not just over dribbling if that's the thing for you, it might be that you're a player that could you know, just be so much better if you were dribbling more that is under dribbling because you're maybe nervous or lack confidence in that area. And if you just learned how to dribble a little bit more, exploit that space a little bit more to really make that defender you're taking on nervous, it would serve you greatly. So number four is dribbling yourself into trouble unnecessarily. So I'm not talking about you find yourself in trouble just because that's kind of how things went. Maybe you got a pass and it was just a pass that you maybe shouldn't have received and then two people are around you right away and you're kind of trapped in the corner. What I'm talking about is in a way it's kind of like over dribbling a bit but I want to really just hone in on this a little more. So let's say for example you take a man one-on-one, -on -one, you beat them but it puts you into a corner. That's kind of what I'm talking about. So it's kind of in that situation could you turn back and pass it off or dribbled into more open space or whatever else it is. And so dribbling to the point where you're in trouble and you just are stacking the odds against yourself to lose the ball or something similar, like into a corner. Before we move on, let me know in the comments what mistakes do you believe are some of the worst to make when you're dribbling that we should be looking to correct. So let me know what it is for you or what you've seen or what you think it is down below in the comments. Now, number three is being predictable, but I also want to add a caveat to this because if you are doing something and it's predictable, but the opponent is giving it to you in the sense of it keeps working. For example, let's say you take the man to the line every single time and you beat them every single time, then don't stop doing it. But if you're too one dimensional and predictable in that sense where the opponent knows exactly what you're going to do because you can't do much else, well, you're not going to be that effective when dribbling. They might know, for example, you can only dribble on your right and you only have a couple moves that you can use on that side. That if they put you on to your left, you're toast, you're done for, right? And so this is why we want to work on things in training to make ourselves more unpredictable. That includes having more skill moves, the ability to go in different directions, you know, not knowing if you're going to pass it, shoot it, or dribble it, having that level of unpredictability, using little fakes and feints and things of this nature, slowing down and then quickly out of nowhere speeding up or speeding up and out of nowhere slowing down. You know, having this unpredictability is going to be so crucial and so beneficial for you in these situations. But again, this is something I always say as well. If something keeps working, keep doing it. You don't become unpredictable for the sake of it. You do it because it works. So if you're enjoying this video so far or you've gotten something out of it, please hit that like button. Now we've got two more to go, starting with number two. And number two is you have no skill moves at your disposal. And we kind of just mentioned this, but 
for each position, I believe there's at least a handful of skill moves you should have mastered and just to learn what it is for you. For example, if you're on the wing, I think you need at least a few moves that are going to allow you to go to your left and go to your right. Um, I like the Ronaldo chop and the step over and moves like that if you're out wide and I find them very, very effective. But if you have no skill moves in your repertoire, and this includes the ability to be able to beat defenders with quick touches and quick turns and things of this nature, where you know how to use your speed to beat opponents. But if you don't have that, again, it makes you predictable and makes it so that when you're in these situations, you're not really going to trouble the defender. And number one, I just call not finding your style. And this is a bit of an interesting one. It's one you can take on board or not. Um, but I think every player kind of develops their own dribbling style that they can get really, really good at. And if you notice a lot of amazing dribblers in, in the professional game, you'll notice that, yes, yeah, some may have similar styles based on what their best attributes are, but there are many different ways to be good at dribbling. For example, someone who's more short and quick and has a lower center of gravity is going to dribble differently than someone who's maybe tall and, you know, it's going to be, you know, it's just going to look different, right? It's going to be a different style. Like we can even look at two of the best dribblers, um, at least in their primes, Ronaldo, Cristiano Ronaldo, and Lionel Messi. Two completely different styles of dribbling, but they're both very, very effective. Now, I mentioned how having skill moves and just being good at some is going to really help you with this. So go watch this video next where I give you seven that will make you a one-on-one -on -one beast. And I would recommend choosing three of these, like I mentioned, to do the three-move skill. That's going to really help you in this area.